they just don't know your kids as well as you do. So why would we ever hope that somebody far, far away like that would be able to have that stewardship themselves? And so he really guards that, that they will not overstep. They will not give your kids their own flavor and say, be like me. They'll be giving an example of what they could do and how things work. And then allowing them to be excited and to grow and to kind of teach themselves in a lot of these pieces, but then to be able to be inspired to go and share with you what they learned and what they gained from that and building up your relationship with your children. That's one of the biggest things about this is it's the ultimate relationship builder for our kids. I wasn't in a place where I really understood so the right word. I didn't think it would be a dream come true to have my children home every day or every hour of the day. Is that fair? Right? That didn't sound awesome to me years ago. And I didn't understand how we could get there, where we could establish some kind of pattern with, you know, just, I didn't know how to get there. But with this, you've got backup. You've got the ultimate where you can say, I'm absolutely governing over how this is working and what my children get access to and what they're doing. And the people there that are helping me are turning my children to me and building me up so that I'm a hero in my children's life. <clears throat> and then you have that time to be able to interact and to cheer them on and to share with them. And so that's what happens with this. Siblings start interacting better together. They start having more understanding and love because it's not about labels anymore. They might be in the same class, they might be in different classes, but they're talking about similar things regardless of their level, and they're learning about valuing people. And they're learning about how to be better friends, and they're learning about how to interact in a better way. And so they start practicing on each other, which is really fun, and practicing on how they communicate with you, which is really fun when your kids are using their language art projects to serve you and to write love letters to their parents. Oh, that's fine. So, that's kind of the role in here. Besides that, a um, couple logistics. We have a local group administrator, like a secretary, who takes care of paperwork and takes care of somebody who walks in the building. So, those people are not just coming in and, can somebody talk to me, right? We've got somebody there. But one thing that we learned whenever we were studying all the different school models and all the different things out there, if you have a bunch of administration that's sitting in the office not really doing a whole lot, and they're getting paid better because they're on top or something. The workhorses, the people that you want to be inspired, you want to have the energy to care about your kids, those guys that you want them to come and feel so uplifted and so free to just give their all in this room, some of what they should be compensated with is being taken away. Is that fair to say it like that? And so we learned from that and thought over and over in a lot of different ways and decided we were going to be the antithesis of that. Where our local group administrator, when she's in that office, if you have a bunch of chatting to do and awesome, she's not the right one. Because she's got a ton to do, but she has a quiet space and she's working on it. And so she's compensated for what she's doing. And she's ultimate support. She's fantastic. For a brand new mom and dad that come in, she can walk you through the steps. She can get you the tools that you need. She can show you where you can come and connect and who's the best person to talk to. She can do those things. But we don't have anybody sitting around with nothing to do. Isn't that great? So when you are investing in your child's education, all of that is an investment. And all of it's being used for the benefit of your children. So things that we can do far away, because there's always that administrative stuff with any kind of business, with any kind of program, with any kind of, even if it's just a service organization. There's some stuff that just needs to happen, right? Well, some of that stuff, like website management, does not need somebody at each location. Does not need local staff. That can happen far away. And so we put it together so that one person can do as much as they possibly can do, and they're probably serving multiple locations. And then in those locations, everyone who's there are specifically serving the families who are right there, and not too many. Just enough to be able to have all the support that you need. So those are kind of the leadership roles and how that works. Any other questions? Can you yes. talk about tuition and scholarships? Oh, thank you. I always miss that part. Right? Like that's important. Right? Show me the money or whatever. It's really important. So with tuition, this is an investment in your child's education. We don't take a penny of government funds. And I don't know if you've been paying attention to what's been happening to schools that started out with really great ideals, but really bad stuff has been happening. And I'll 
Anyway, as you get to know them better, you just, my heart goes out to them. It is so stressful to have somebody kind of own you and get to tell you what to do all the time. Or to punish you if you don't change when they change. Even if when you first decided to have that relationship, you had really great things and they told you that was okay. So we're seeing that across the board. So here, we've just decided we'll never take a penny of government time. We've had a couple families that they had money that was attached to their children, but it was a more direct government funding type program. Our tax credit program and our scholarship program is so much better, is so much freer, and doesn't govern what we do here in class. We can be free to absolutely serve the needs of the families here because we specifically do not do any of those close ties things. So, the state of Arizona is different than other states. We absolutely want to support other states to have what we have. So, if you're in another state um, watching the video, let us know if you're ready to help us make this happen. But what we get to do here in Arizona is there are four different tax laws, and I'll just talk about two of them. I'm going to three of them. The first one, everybody qualify. Doesn't matter what your income is. Doesn't matter what your situation is in life. Every single child can have their parents apply for them at a scholarship organization, which there's a lot of them in our state because these tax laws have been in action for a while. They can apply and they can absolutely qualify. There's nothing that would say that they couldn't receive funding for their tuition for a private school, which is awesome. So we love that one. That one's really fun. The next one, it says if you're in a public school or you were going to go to a public school because you're on that, like, getting ready for kindergarten age, it's called the switcher credit. They want to lure you out. They don't want you to go to public school. At least the guys that are doing tax law and they have the budgets for the state. There's other people who do, right? But the guys who are setting the law, they created one called the switcher credit, which we think that one's really fun. And it's kind of funny. It's a little bit ironic, but it works. So with that one, if you're specifically switching, now you also qualify for that pot of money, which is great. Then another, there's a whole other pot of money, and this one, let me see, okay, sorry. These first two, these come from people that have a tax liability, individuals like you and I, either filing single or filing jointly. State of Arizona probably feels like they're owed some money from you. And so instead of letting the state either keep the money if they already took it, or letting them take it if you owe, you can absolutely vote with your tax dollars and say, I would like $2,100 or I'd like, you know, $1,000 of that money that you want to keep to go towards scholarshiping. And you're donating it to a nonprofit organization. They're called STOs. And because they're a nonprofit, you also can have a federal deduction if you itemize. Talk to your tax consultant. But how fun is that? So somebody who says, I want to vote with my tax dollars, they get a chance to potentially have an extra write-off to have a dollar for dollar credit for whatever it is they donated comes back up to the limit, which is pretty big, a lot bigger than the public school tax credit, and it gets bigger every year. And the public school tax credit, that one, it's another credit. You could do both. There's solar panel credits. There's a lot of different credits. You can take as many tax credits as you want, so you just get to vote with your tax dollars. A lot of people don't know that that works, but once you kind of figure it out, then it's kind of that fun game of how much can I choose what to do instead of it just being taken. We get the bucket because then it helps kids. Okay, so that's those are the two that are funded by individuals who have tax liability. The third one out of the four is funded by corporations. So actually, right now we're talking to people that either have an S corp or a C corp business, and they can be on the list, and they can take their entire tax liability and say instead of the state keeping it. I would like that to go and support kids at a private school. They really like that. How charitable of them. It costs them the same, but how charitable of them. Isn't that great? They got to pick where their money went. That's so much fun, and the state loves it, because really, I guess we can talk about that if you guys have a question, but it saves them actually a lot of money on their bottom line if kids leave the public school system. So they're really pretty thrilled as far as money goes, if you do that. So that limit gets bigger every year. It's in the multiple millions of dollars. And what they do is they take this stack of all these people who said, I really want to do this with my tax liability. I want to just give it to the state. I want to do this. I want to help private school kids. And they put them in a stack. And on July 1st, I think it's like a minute after midnight, they go on the top of the stack and they say, yep, they have all their pieces in line. 
they get to do this. They just, oh, they get to do this until the limit is filled. And then the doors are closed. And usually, I mean, this is such a popular thing now that people know that it exists. It's usually closed where they don't have any more money that people can do this with in like two or three weeks after July 1st. So anybody that has a CRS hurt business, it's time now to say, okay, let's kind of get that stuff in line. So that's really fun. And those tax dollars that are going, <coughs> those can support families that they consider low income, which their definition of low income is, it surprised me. I guess people who understand how government works better, it would surprise them, but pretty much if you have a few kids and you're not living in four different houses, that you are probably considered low income. It's really great. The graph's online and it just changes every time you have a new child and then just mass increase what that number can't be above. So a lot of families that didn't think that they would, they also qualify for that third pot of money. The, four, the, the one in the middle that I didn't, you know, my visual of like these two here and that one there, this third one, that's really for kids that are, you know, adopted or, or foster children or military families. So not everyone qualifies for that one, but you have the potential with this state, with these tax laws, that you could have 100% of your tuition money completely covered. Very feasible to just help get those funds filled, whether it's a couple people specifying your children, or whether it's just connecting a couple companies, or whatever it is, or just being part of a community where we feel like we really want there to be more money than seats for children to come and attend school. It's really feasible to do that. And I see it happen. That's what we did for our family the first couple of years that we did a private school. And it totally worked. And so we love those tax laws. It's great. It's like one of the very few tax laws that I can get behind and support. And I don't have to do anything. And every year they let us have more and more room to be able to use this for these kids. So it's an awesome program. One thing that we get to do is a family who chooses to come here, you're investing in your child's education, so you might do a down payment, like 10% of the tuition, depending on how many electives you'd like your kids to participate in, or if you're signing up for a semester or whatever. So you put that investment in, and you're saying, okay, I'm here. This is what I want for my kids. We can absolutely, as soon as scholarshiping money comes in, we can absolutely refund that money once scholarshiping is taken care of. They let us, let them know what the real number is that is your child's tuition, and then they are working to fund that number. They're not working to kind of add to what you've done or add to what you've paid in. They're just looking at, here's what it would take for this child to have the education they've chosen. And so we love that. That's so nice. I love giving refunds to us, right? That's one of the most fun things about refunds. <laughs> so it's just so much fun to do that. It's a joy for us. The money that comes from those scholarship organizations it doesn't come for our projects. It doesn't come for our pet ideas or our excitement. You know, we're, that's not where the money goes. The money only comes with the child's name on it to us for their tuition. And so we've done a good job to really budget what we're doing. That everything that we need to do is self-sustaining within that budget, which is good for us to not get distracted with some projects, right? You don't want to be distracted with some projects. But to be able to say everything's taken care of, the teachers are compensated to the max, we have the things that we need. So when tuition money comes in, it's for that child's account, and their tuition can be covered. And so, that's does that answer your question? Great. Does anybody else have a question? It's a lot of information really fast. <laughs> I can have a question. Yeah. So with, with the scholars, you mentioned that they're going to bring material from home, and the parents send what they want them to work on. With the explorers and the foundations, do they send material for those, or is those all teacher-led? Awesome. Yeah, good. Okay, so foundations. With each of these classes, kind of like with the electives, the teacher might say, here's what's coming. Here's, if you brought this, this would really help with this class. Or there might be materials fee. Some of the electives, like we have this fine arts class, I think they managed to see it's 15 or $20 to remember Sasha. Only. Okay. I'm not in the arts class. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so it's just small little materials fees, a lot of times for electives, to just be able to help them be able to have everything that they need. What we found is, though, with the foundations class, there's just really, really basics or nothing that you need there. Because that teacher who's guiding over, they're really providing you with tools. That's part of why you're there, is so that you can really have what you need to be able to help your kids learn how to read. And then as they mature a little bit, they're coming to class 
They're just basics. Long study, actually all of these, basic art supplies, water bottle, pipe snack, scriptures. Okay, now if you don't know how to read. That one's okay. But with these ones, these guys know how to read. And so much of what they're doing is they're going to their scriptures, whatever those scriptures are. And you might see some very different scriptures being opened up. That's great. They're going to their scriptures and they're checking what they found with their parents and how they feel about it. So, what else? Um, in the Explorers class, one of our favorite tools is an open, empty notebook. Something that just has room for them to fill it with all of the nuggets and all of their favorite things and all of their favorite parts of what they learned that day so that it's really easy when they bring that home. Because you can open that up and say, tell me about this, because what in the world? You know, <laughs> I don't know if any of you have gotten those notes yet, but it's just so much fun. So in the Explorers class, just those basics, just a notebook. That's all they need. The teacher's really guiding through this process. And they're not really doing goals planning. You might have a goal with your child to be able to build up, to be able to get to the next developmental level, but they're not really doing a selfish curriculum yet. They're just really learning how to love learning and what it's for. And so we really make it fun, and our supplies are very important to this. So scholar classes, both of them. In here, since they are bringing curriculum, if you as a parent say, I really need my child to be working on this, that is my goal for them. Who are we to say that we know better, right? So you can say that. What we do is we make sure that if we are going to have a recommended anything, we look at it, does it build a relationship between the parent and the child? Does it build up those principles in that child so they can live their purpose? Does it have a line upon line approach where it has order and it makes sense? So we have things we recommend. We have things that is the philosophy behind how the teachers are creating their lesson. But is that absolute, you have to do the process that we provide? That wouldn't make sense for what we're doing. This is an agency-based school. So we will absolutely have children that are working in different math curricula. And that's up to you. And a lot of the people here that are the leaders, the group leaders, they've seen a lot of awesome stuff. And so if you have that question of, this is what I'm looking for, what's the piece that could help me specifically with this? You might get some of the best recommendations ever because it's real people who are right there with your kids and they can say, oh, well, if they're stuck right here, we can jump out and here's an idea of something to do right now that they could be working on independently. So, they do have different tools. We do have things we recommend. Pretty much the things we recommend, they're not going to be comparable to things you've seen before. They'll be like spiral rings, like printed, or a PDF that you can print at your will. Things like that that you can just say, oh, this is just my guide. Like the recipe, the basics. But you can go and make it a lot more exciting. It's not meant to be exciting on its own. Still, even for the senior scholars, art supplies. We have a lot of kids going, where are my colored pencils? They're creating. And how much fun is that if you tell them they can only use one color pen, one specific kind of pencil? It's not very inspiring, is it? To have something to write with, something to write on, whether it's a notebook or a journal or, you know, a spiral ring, whatever. Just as long as they have something where they can go and create and explore and be able to have that ownership because this is their education. We're teaching them that this is theirs and that they are absolutely responsible to have their tools there for that day. I think that's pretty much it. So yeah, and one of the interview things that we'll talk about in the process when we get there is really just getting to know your child a little bit and then helping to see where they fit in there, where you want them, and what those specific tools would be for that role. So if you have a child and you're saying this year really just our focus is addition. I mean, we're really, that's all, we're, I just want that. We're not gonna recommend a tool for that child that's the same as someone that comes in and says they wanna get through the entire math curriculum in a year, and they wanna go and start doing like trigonometry and college algebra and all that fun stuff. There's gonna be different recommendations, and you as the parent always says yes. Let me see that, or oh, I have something else, great. That's awesome. We're here to support you in that you want. Cool. Okay. Anything else? Yes. On your uh, the new campus. Yes. You be doing the same. same. Yes. Yeah. This philosophy the same. We even have some of the same leadership. So we talked about like the leadership that's kind of further away that's helping with things. We're kind of all of the locations in there, Arizona. So even Kingman, we have one like administrative group that's kind of helping with all the stuff. 
And so as we're doing trainings and as we're doing all these different things, these ones are probably going to be the most similar versus a school that has a completely different set of laws in their state and, you know, those kind of things. But these will be really, really similar. Okay. And when they do the um, electives, they can yeah. choose yeah. which yeah. campus they come or Absolutely. You know, depending on what's available yeah. on the campus. So, sorry that I'm really super difficult. So we have, we have on-campus and off-campus electives. So, on-campus electives, if you're part of our school, you can attend wherever that elective is that you want to have. We have some really awesome stuff that comes here to us, and they are doing programs right here for your kids. So they can just go from sign language to art to musical theater to all these different things, which is so much fun. We also have off-campus electives, like swim lessons and horseback riding lessons. We do not have that on campus. <laughs> I've had a few offers of you could maybe, <clears throat> we're not interested in worrying about that part. And we have some of the most amazing connections that have everything that they need to do what they're doing. And so these different campuses that are kind of clustered in the area, you kind of get an advantage if you have a few different little schools. Because now your kids can maybe have one campus and one campus, both be taking musical theater and be working towards a play that they'd be working on together and have that bigger production, even though it's small campuses popping up all over. We can both meet at horseback riding lessons, and those kids that have that passion are going to see other kids that have that passion that want to do that. You know, be able to be on the same swim teams with friends that maybe live in North Mesa, but we go down to the ASU Polytech campus to go swim in their heated pool. Super fun. So, those are kind of the two divisions of our electives. That is a really good question because it's really fun. Okay, any other questions? Okay, you're like, I have no. <coughs> I think maybe like a little bit like a description on like, I love the fact that like the electives, the pricing is like a set price for for all of it. That these companies, even though someone might pay a different price for horseback riding lessons or swim team, but like the set price for the school and that anybody yeah. in the community can take advantage of that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so if you have connections to people or if you yourselves feel like I just want to be on with my kids all day long, but I'd love to come and participate, that's what this gets you right here. If you can come in and if you want to do horse trick lessons for a semester for 300 bucks, you're not going to find that anywhere else. But these guys are amazing. And we get to do things like that. And it's been just beautiful where the electives teachers, and some of you might be interested in doing some of the electives, when you have students that are from this kind of a program, it's a different population of students that are signing up to do something. Because they've probably had a hand in choosing to do it. It's elective. They did not need to do that. It was not part of something required. The parents probably really want them to do it, so they're more supportive in helping them have the tools that they need and be where they need to be. And then you've got these kids that are learning leadership principles and communication principles, like how fun is that? That those are the kids that would be coming by choice to learn what it is that you have a passion for that you want to offer. They really like us, and we love the relationships that we have with our elective teachers. And so a lot of them will give us huge discounts in the stuff that we have access to. And they, I haven't had one that we were working with that says, oh, well, no, it's like, yeah. 150 for a semester of swim lessons that are at the caliber where these kids could go and like get scholarshiping because they're going to be learning from some of the best. And you know, Michael Phelps Swim School, I don't know if you guys heard about that, but their philosophy, you kind of, if you replace a few words, it sounds a lot like how we feel about developing a child academically, but it's with swimming. How fun is that? So just things like that. We get to do really cool stuff. Okay, so that's it. Unless you guys have another question, feel free to hang out for a few minutes. I'm going to be here for a little bit and then I'm going to run because